Okay, recording is on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, BC314, our course on media and technology. And we're going to get started. I uh, will probably just do one hour or maybe less than one hour uh, lecture today, just uh, uh, having a little sore throat and stuff like that. So I just want to go and get some rest. So uh, let's get things started today and we will uh, continue things next week. May somebody uh, lead us in prayer, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Somebody could lead us in prayer that we will get started, please. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, uh, opportunity that you've given us uh, to come before you, Lord, to um, uh, gather together, Lord, and learn uh, these principles for the Lord, um, these uh, 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 leveraging, uh, Lord, the technology uh, in um, in media and ministry for the lord um uh, yes father lord we uh, pray that you help us understand father you give us the wisdom uh, uh we pray that you uh, help us not only gain the knowledge but help us also apply uh, these um, in areas of ministry for the lord that it can um uh, father help in the advancement of the kingdom of god uh we thank you and praise you for pastor Ashish. uh we pray your grace your uh, uh kind, kindness and mercy uh, father your wisdom upon him father lord uh, I pray, Father, for complete uh, healing uh, from uh, every uh, sickness, Father, um, um, uh, that uh, he be able to uh, 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 be able to carry out, Lord, his uh, responsibilities and uh, duties, Father, Lord, uh, in the days ahead. Uh, we also commit all the students, Lord, who have gathered here, Lord, uh, who are uh, on the way to join, Father. We pray that you uh, guide us with your Holy Spirit, Abba, that uh, we be able to um, listen attentively father and be able to apply these truths in jesus precious name we pray amen amen thank you thank you all right welcome everyone and uh, i have shared the uh, the pdf for this lesson and um, so you should be able to get that from the uh, class book classroom um, let me go ahead and share the PDF here. And uh, so we are going to start talking about digital equipment. And uh, when I talk about equipment, it's kind of a, a mix of software and hardware. So it's not only the hardware part, but software and hardware um, that we use for media work. And, uh, I'm sure I'm, we're going to go through this mainly to give us all um, an overview and an understanding of uh, different things that are actually used even in a church setting. Right? So we, we, are, we are using all of these things, and uh, and um, you know, as a pastor, I think I mentioned this last week. Uh, as a pastor, uh, even though you know my, my main responsibility is the spiritual side, uh, because uh, of uh, responsibility, I have to get involved in some of these things, making decisions. You know, uh, when uh, when our team, of course, I'm not doing all this work. The work is being done by uh, people in uh, different kinds of people in different areas, but uh, they will refer back when we have to make decisions. You know. Uh, what software to buy, uh, what hardware to buy, what equipment to buy, all those kinds of decisions. And of course, ultimately, you're responsible because you have to say yes or no, you have to approve or not approve. And, uh, you know, if money gets wasted or the source gets wasted, people can question you as the leader or the pastor, uh, why money was spent on so on and so forth. So, um, we need to understand these things so that we can make right decisions at the right time. Uh, although the work is actually being done by other people, uh, decisions on these things also uh, come back to uh, pastors or ministry leaders or those who are involved in these areas. So I'm sharing it from that perspective and also for you to understand what people in the church may be doing. 
that they're doing these things and so on. So, um, so let's start up with some basic thing, you know, graphics software. So when uh, uh, graphics, of course, is a very useful, very important part of media uh, uh, for almost everything. Uh, when you're making announcements, you're doing, you know, egg videos and, you know, different things. Uh, graphics will have to be created. Somebody is going to do it. And to do that, of course, they need the uh, appropriate software. And so there are both commercial and free software that could be used. Uh, the commercial one, which is uh, from Adobe Creative Cloud, this whole suite of uh, tools that are available. And uh, the interesting thing is um, we can receive a discount for nonprofit. So they do offer an offer. We've benefited from that, uh, you know, uh, by getting a discount, saying, okay, we are a church organization. And so they do give us discount and um, we can, you know, uh, make, continue to use this software, buy licenses and, you know, our, our media team uses that. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you're not interested in, you know, spending money on using licensed software, you can also use a lot of free software that's available. You know, starting from Canva or uh, other things. And I'm sure there'd be lots and lots of other uh, free applications, web applications that you could use for graphics. So, you know, if your team is small, if your congregation is small, and you just want to create, you know, interesting graphics without necessarily paying for licensed software, there's a lot of options and a lot of things can be done. We, in, in, in no way, you know, should our work be hindered. And, we also have a free a free version of uh, Adobe Create Cloud Express that can be used. Okay. And then video editing software for people you know who are involved in video editing. Again, you've got uh, paid, licensed versions of software. You've also got free uh, versions. Uh, we are using Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, which is a licensed version. Our team uses it, but you can also have you know use some of the free editing software, which in many cases is more than enough uh, for the kind of work that needs to be done, basic, simple videos and things like that. Uh, you can do that. Right? And with this video editing software, you can also uh, use multiple cameras. So it's not just that you know, you're using one single camera what you and you edit just that video output, but you could use uh, multiple cameras, bringing in images, and then you uh, you switch between different cameras, and you get a a, a, one, you know, a good uh, video produced. And uh, you can also use uh, you know cameras for motion tracking. That's that's you are recording people as they are doing things. Um, so, for example, uh, we. Um, I'm not sure we're doing it right now, but there was a time but until recently we were tracking, for example, when you see our Sunday services and you suddenly see, uh, you know, the the, um, the drummer, you see a close-up of the drummer and he's drumming and, he's, and um, we have a small GoPro fixed onto, you know, the, 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 the screen right there close to him. And so we switched to that, we can see what he's doing and and show that as part of the overall production. So we can track or we can even attach a small video to people who are moving uh, and, and uh, actually track what they're doing. So you can use videos even for motion tracking uh, when you attach a video and, uh, to the object that they're moving and you can record what's happening. So you can do a lot of things with video, having the right cameras and so on. Some of the other things that you also and need to know is that, um, uh, and the reason I mention it, these kinds of things is because sometimes um, uh, after recording happens, um, uh, you can request the team, the media team, to do these things. So if you know that they can do it, uh, you can tell them to do it. One is, for example, color grading. Uh, so if in the recording, for whatever reason, you know, lights suddenly went dim or 
you know, the clouds came on and so light was blocked and, you know, all kinds of things happened while you're recording. Uh, you don't have to worry and say, oh, no, my recording is gone. No, 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 no. Uh, you can always improve the what has been recorded by doing what is known as color grading. So they can make it look better. They can, uh, even though while recording something may have gone wrong, lights may have gone and something was not exactly right, they could improve it while they are editing. They, they can do this color grading um, and uh, you know, they can make some changes to how things appear. So uh, understand that, you know, while you're recording the video, well, of course, you want to do it the best. There's a lot that can happen while you are editing the video and working on it uh, using the software. Uh, you can also do special effects. Right? So you can request for some of these things that, hey, while the sermon is doing, I want uh, I want the script just to come on the side or, or on the lower or lower third, or I want it to come on the side. I want you to switch between scriptures and the video, uh, things like that. You know, so you can ask for these things. If you know that they can actually do these, it can be done obviously with software right? and, and uh, multiple cameras and so on. You can ask for this. Hey, I would like this to happen. Uh, and or while I am preaching on this particular portion, show this particular graphic so that it communicates to the people. Um, you know, it, it enhances what is being communicated. You can ask for that special effect to be applied uh, on the video. Um, also, uh, you can do certain things that like you can speed up, slow down, do some reverse time effects. Some, Things with the action, how things are happening, uh, and, and and these can be done. Uh, uh, I don't I don't actually interfere with what the details of the media team is doing, but from time to time I can make requests. Like I can say, hey, you know, do this for this, please, and so on, so that uh, they get an idea of what I what I would, what I would like to be done in a certain video and so on. So it's good to know that. You know uh, that these things can be done, and you can request them whenever they're needed. Otherwise, you know, most of the time the media team is completely free to do their work. Um, another important thing to understand is about video rendering. That means, and this is important because you need to know that this takes a lot of time. That means, uh, or, or, you know, they they work on a video, but before they can actually release the video out into the public. They have to render the video and uh, depending on the duration of the video the resolution of it this rendering can take time you know it can take sometimes and also depending on the hardware that you have um, uh, sometimes and especially for these long sermons and things like that uh, it can take a, quite a lot of time maybe an hour two hours three hours just depending on how the duration and so on so the reason uh, you need to keep this in mind is maybe as a pastor you say, "Hey, do the video and release it." Well, it's not as simple as that because they do the, they have to work. It takes time to work on the video, do all this stuff, and then even after the everything is done, they have to render it. And if it is, you know, a forty-five minute, fifty minute, one hour sermon, and depending on all that's gone into it, the rendering itself may take, you know, two three hours depending on what they're doing. So you're wondering, like, what are they doing? Why is it not uh, being released? Because it takes time to render the video before they can release it out to the public. Right? So just keep that in mind so you can factor that in when you're working with your media team. It's not uh, straightforward. There is this step that is involved uh, as well uh, in all the work they do. They have to uh, render the video. And lastly, uh, just keep in mind that um, uh, many times uh, if it's simple things you know uh, it can be done on mobile phones itself uh, small videos you know, things that are happening small events people can just uh, record edit it on their phone and push it up on social media so uh, we can make use of that if you want people to report on events in almost real time so if some event is happening a conference is happening uh, you want people to just quickly upload a small snippet a snapshot of what's happening that can be done it doesn't have to go through this long process of 
editing and you know in, in, in a very professional in a way uh, it can be done right there on their phones they can do it and upload it just to keep people informed of what's happening so that's something we are familiar with right so this is a little introduction uh, in terms of um, graphic software and video editing, editing software what you can do we'll get into more details uh, a little later right similarly for desktop publishing so uh, for our books, ABC books, uh, the way we work is uh, I would, uh, you know, I, I just use Word document, Word, Microsoft Word to write the book, the, the, the content. Then I send it off to Hannah, who is our head of publications. She will then read, work through it in terms of proofing, corrections, checking everything, you know, layer. Uh, just making sure it's in the standard format. She still works in the Word document. And from there, it goes to a uh, desktop publisher. Uh, right now, we don't have an in-house person. So this person is, is actually sitting at our printing printers, whom we work with. So after Hannah does her check, she will send that Word document uh, to our to the desktop publisher. And all of that work is done in uh, uh, domain in design. So there, the desktop publishing publisher actually puts it in a layout in the format, which is then going to get printed into the book. So our books are of a standard size, and we have uh, certain standard things. You know, we have cover graphic, we have the inside cover. All those details have to be taken care of. They have to be laid out in, in design. And, uh, you know, the chapters, chapter headings, of all those things have to be taken care of. So somebody has to do it. As of now, it is outside. Uh, at some point, we may have our own person doing this work in-house. But they use desktop publisher. Now, um, in the past, in the past, uh, they were using PageMaker. So all our early books, you know, from 2001 till about, um, I think, uh, I'm thinking maybe 2007, 16, 17, something like that. Um, they were doing it in PageMaker, a different software. And then we had to move everything to InDesign. And so that was a big problem for us because all our old books, were done in a different software, saved in a different format. Now we are moving to an upgrade, I mean, a different version, something more, more contemporary. Uh, but all the content is in a no different format, which cannot be read here. You know. So it's a big problem for us to uh, move all our books um, from PageMaker to InDesign. Uh, but we had to work through that process one by one, get all our books into this publishing software and you know then so now we are maintaining we keep our own copies of word in design pdf so one book uh, is a you know we keep it safe in all of these formats and then you add to this different languages so we have english for english you know you don't need to keep this book uh, you need to have a repository of uh, you know the word document the in design document and the PDF. Now you have to do this in for all the other languages. And now in languages, there's another problem, which is um, we have to write it in that particular script. And uh, the translators have to type it in Unicode, which is again a very specific way in which these, the DTP person will want it. So we have to be careful of that. So, okay, you save it as Unicode and send it to us so that then we can then give it to the publisher and take it forward. And then again, we have to do the same thing, keep a copy of all the formats so that we can bring out further revisions. And so so uh, the books, there's a lot of work that happens actually uh, using this whole desktop publishing and so on. Uh, so. You just need to understand it. Uh, I, I personally, I don't do this, but I understand it. Why? Because sometimes 
they will say, hey, we're having a problem with this, or this happened, and then you need to give some guidance on how to solve the problem, or how to resolve it, and you know, so on, those kind of things. Those kind of things, as a leader, you have to provide the answers and guidance, although you're not the person doing the work, actually, there are different people doing the work, you know, but you need to know how to help them get past any problem that they might face, right? So it's good to know, you know, what software is being used, what formats, why they are facing certain problems, uh, and so on. Okay, uh, just maybe one or two more I'll just touch on before we stop today. Another important software that you will be using in church and ministry is for media presentation. That means uh, inside the hall or auditorium where uh, uh, your audience is during worship. Uh, as the worship team is singing, you need to sh display the lyrics of the song. Then during the sermon, you may need to display the scripture verses. And you may also need to display some important points, you know, uh, of the preacher preaching. And not only that, so that is for the audience that are in-house inside the auditorium but also if you're live streaming it should also these new song lyrics scripture verses uh, key points the points of your sermon should also come for them right those are watching online uh, so it should happen in both places it should happen inside the auditorium as well as it should happen online so live stream, we will talk a little later in this document, how the live stream is set up. We'll explain that. Uh, but uh, for, and again, all of this is done through presentation software. Right? And uh, talking about in-house, in so for the people inside the hall, um, again, you have uh, commercial free open source software that you can use for presentation of course we all know simplest is the powerpoint uh you just have a if you're just using a a simple uh, uh, lcd uh, projector and you're putting on the screen yeah powerpoint is more than enough but if you're doing these song lyrics and uh, you're switching between you know screens and so on it's there is you know uh, software that's tailored for use in church in the early days we were using a software that was called easy worship and it was good enough in those days uh, for our, our use in the church service uh, we could do a lot of things so song lyrics scriptures announcements media announcements that are played sermon notes everything are uh, very good uh, then uh, there was a slightly better uh, software called ProPresenter, uh, and so we switched to ProPresenter quite a few years ago, uh, which is a licensed a licensed version, and we use ProPresenter for all other work. Now, practically, what happens? So this is what happens uh, for every week. So the worship team. Uh, the worship, let's say, uh, at, and this has to happen across all our locations. So there are five locations uh, in Bangalore. And now what happens is each worship leader who is leading worship, the worship leader decides on the songs that they're going to sing that Sunday. So the worship leader for each location, after they've decided, okay, they're going to sing these five songs or six songs, they will put the lyrics of that song uh, in a word document. Uh, they have to check the, make sure all the spellings are correct. So we don't want anything projected on the screen that has bad, uh, you know, wrong spelling, some spelling mistakes or things. We don't want that. So the worship leader's responsibility is to make sure that the lyrics are correct. And uh, what we have, we decided to do was to capitalize all the words. So that way, uh, you know, uh, less chance of error uh, between 
capital G and small g and capital H for Holy Spirit and small h and all those things. Yeah? So we just capitalize all the words. Uh, everything is in caps. So uh, less likelihood of error happening in terms of what needs to be capitalized, what doesn't. So that's why all the lyrics will come up as caps. So that's a standard thing we follow. And then uh, that Word document is sent to the media team. So media team gets the worship uh, lyrics. And they get it into their version, that local version of ProPresenter. It's there, put in there. They get ready with it. And then um, also, if I am preaching on Sunday, whoever is preaching, the pastor, prepares the sermon notes. And uh, so, you know, I, I have my full sermon notes, but I have to make a, a version called a week or a, a key points so, of the text. There's just the text that I want, which I want to come on the screen. So I have my own sermon notes. I won't send the full sermon notes to the uh, media team. I will send only uh, uh, the, the highlights, the, the things that I want, the scriptures and the key points. So I send them. Usually I'll send it by Thursday. So if I send it by Thursday morning, the media team has to prepare two kinds of presentations. One, they prepare a PowerPoint with the sermon outline, with the sermon key points. And the PowerPoint is used in all of our other locations. And they also prepare graphics for each and every text, for every verse, everything. Because that graphic is going to be used uh, for the lower third, for the live stream. So for the live stream, it's a separate set of graphics is prepared because that will appear on the lower third for the live stream, whereas um, for the in-house, people inside the auditorium, they are seeing what's coming from PowerPoint. So both these things are prepared by the media team, and they send it to the what we call as the media presentation team. So the media team, that is the people inside the off church office, they prepare the PowerPoint, they prepared their graphics for the lower third for everything. And they will send it to the media presentation team. The media presentation team is the team that actually does the presentation on Sunday morning in the service, in-house and for live stream. Okay. So by uh, so, so the way this works is I have to send the outline by Thursday morning. Usually by Thursday evening, the PowerPoint and the lower third graphics is ready. It goes for a quality check. So there is one person dedicated to check everything. There should not be any spellings, errors, etc. Everything is correct. They approve it. Then by Friday evening, the media team will send everything to the media presentation team. That is the team that is going to actually do the work of presenting on Sunday. So. By Friday evening, everything is ready. Then on Sunday morning, the media presentation team at Central has to make sure that the lyrics and the sermon text come on both in-house on the LED screens as well as for the live stream and people are watching. But they have all the content ready. They have the PPT ready. They have the lower third graphics ready, and they put it into ProPresenter. Uh, they can import it into ProPresenter, and then through ProPresenter, they do the projection in-house and live stream. And we will talk in detail about how the live stream happens a little later on. But that's the work that goes into the media presentation. Right? So uh, the preparation is done. Everything is ready by Friday evening. And then on Sunday morning, all these things happen. Okay. And uh, people have been trained. So people are trained. They do, they do all these things and so on. Okay. Um, 
Any questions so far? Is that too much of information in one day? <laughs> uh, did you all follow what's happening? Any questions? Yeah. All right, so uh, I think I'll just pause here for today. I will, uh, uh, we, we've got a lot more to cover. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, uh, we'll pick this up next week, is we will talk about camera, uh, which is just camera for photography. Uh, again, why do you need to know it? Because somebody will come and say, Pastor, we need to buy a camera. <laughs> and then you have to think, uh, OK, I have to buy a camera. How much should I spend? Uh, what kind of camera do I need to buy? Uh, what is the advantage of this versus that? And uh, yeah, you have to make that decision. Then we're going to talk about our uh, sound system, public address system. So mics, speakers, mixers, cables, just to understand a little bit on that, because they're also they're going to come and say, we need to buy this, we need to buy that. OK, uh, you have to ask the right questions, why you need it. And also, you need to have some understanding about how the sound is distributed inside the auditorium, because sometimes congregation people will come and complain, it's too loud, or it's, I can't hear. Or uh, in that part of the auditorium, I can't hear all these kinds. And, you know, it has happened many times. So then you need to understand what is happening and how you know we need to make sure that in the auditorium everybody's comfortable in listening to the sound. So we talk about that. Then we talk about the video camera parts, which is the video production part. So again, here you will need to know a little bit about video cameras and what goes into doing a video production. For example, we, we do a lot. Um, maybe um, there is uh, the five minute daily devotional. Uh, so that's recorded ahead of time. I'll just I'll go into the details. I'm just giving you an overview of what we're going to cover next week and the weeks to come. So daily devotional. So every day we put out a five minute video of how that production is done. Uh, and then we may, you know, uh, we, we may do, or we used to do something longer, like 20 minute productions. So just an idea of how that is done. Or if you're doing a music shoot, you know, what goes into it, the cameras and all of that equipment. So just an understanding, because as a leader, uh, people come to you and say, we need to, we need this camera, we need this lighting, uh, we want this kind of a set, uh, then you have to, you know, you have to either approve or ask questions and all of that. So, because ultimately you have to approve the money that is going to be spent. So you need to have some understanding. And then we'll talk about the live stream setup. Live stream is very useful these days because uh, we have the tools and it gives you the opportunity to reach a lot more people than those inside the auditorium. So it's good to have a live stream set up for your congregation. Uh, we will go through the, 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 the setup that you need and uh, you can get started very simply and then you can improve it. Uh, step by step, and it's 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 wonderful. You know, when we actually started live stream, um, in I think it was uh, 2017, 2018, uh, we started very simple. We had only one camera. It was just kept focused on the stage, and that's it. And we just used to have maybe somewhere around 30 people watching online. That's all. And then uh, the numbers increased. So. Now, on an average, we may have about 200 people watching us live during the service. And then again, a lot of people do watch it afterwards. So the live stream has happened, and then we see people listening to it, uh, watching the stream at a later point whenever it's convenient to them. So there's a lot of benefit. You can uh, extend your reach beyond that. And so we will talk about the live stream setup. Then we'll talk a little bit about podcasting. 
how you can set up a, have a simple setup for podcast and do that as well. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover. Uh, we'll we'll do this next week um, and go on. But you're you're welcome to go through the notes. I've given the notes. You can just look ahead and get some ideas. Okay, any questions today? All right, so let's pause here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stopping a little early. I just want to give myself a little rest. So I'm stopping a little early. Uh, we'll pick this up next week and take it forward. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Let's close. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Bye now.